Now, expectations were low heading to Everton in the Cup. I mean, it was never going to be a classic. Uh, so no surprise that it went to penalties. Uh, Alfie, you were there. There were a, a good few Saints fans, too, that made the journey. So fair play to anybody that went. Um, Ten changes again for the Cup, but it was certainly a stronger eleven than the last round. And as it turns out, a few players staking claims and some getting minutes. Yeah, I think, unfortunately, Glenn's bankrupt now, isn't he? Buying t- a thousand gold medals. I think it's <laughs> I knew you'd remember that. <laughs> I mean, look, first one's first. It is yeah. genuinely fair play to the thousand that are there on a Tuesday night. Obviously, I know that they're there um, in part because of getting you know away matches up so they can get tickets for the better games. But ultimately, you've still got to get there. Still got to, they might um, live a bit further there. up the country as well, of course. Yeah, most possibly. But it was a, it was a good effort on a, on a Tuesday night, more than I expected. Um, yeah. And they outsung the, the Everton fans the entire game. Obviously, that isn't particularly hard. And we got sort of a flavour as to why, because I thought Everton um, were fairly poor. I mean... Some of the May 10 changes, we sort of predicted 11 or 10, didn't we? Mm. Um, and obviously, we've, we mentioned the fact that Ryan Fraser and Charlie Taylor stayed in the team. Um, it was a, a huge night for Harvard, Taylor Harvard Bellis because ultimately he'd been dropped. Um, he'd been dropped out of the, the team last weekend and he came back in. I thought he was genuinely really good all night. Um, obviously, it's a brilliant header to score the goal. And then he, he took his penalty and scored it as well. So for him, with the armband, um, it was a great night for him. And yeah, I mean, also, I really enjoyed the fact that it was Alex McCarthy's 150th appearance for Saints, and he, he ended up being a hero. He, I, know, I know, obviously, Steve um, and Glenn probably maybe joke a little about the fact that he got nowhere near the first five penalties. Um, <laughs> his teammates gave him the chance to, to get near the sixth one, and he stopped it. But it was, you know, during the game, he made a number of saves as well. Um, it's Jesper Lindstrom, isn't it? Jesper Lindstrom for Everton. I mean, yeah. he was throwing goal one-on-one twice. So, yeah, I can't believe he didn't put Everton home and away. Um, there's obviously a reason there. The only team below Southampton in the league. So, yeah, good night for a couple of the players coming back into the team. And uh, I enjoyed my trip to Goodison Park. You know, it's, uh, it's it's the worst press box in the country. There's no room at all, particularly for someone of my size, both length and width nowadays. Um, but it's well, still think, a nice think how Adam Blackmore gets on. <laughs> I mean, He's yeah. bad, isn't he? You see, that's actually even worse for Adam because uh, where I'm sat, <laughs> it's, a, it's a fixed bench and it's just like a fixed platform so you can squeeze in and out. Um, but for Adam, on the radio side, it's one of those pulley down ones. And, you know, he's he's self admitted himself, the pulley down bit doesn't really fit. So he's got all the radio gear on there. Once you're in, you're in for 90 minutes. <laughs> well, I wasn't expecting to go down that route. Um, <laughs> let Steve, I mean, it was a soft goal to concede, wasn't it? The, the header. Let's talk about Standard. that first. Let's, I mean, yeah. I, I think you mentioned before about the, the set pieces and uh, it, it, they're working on it every week, but it still seems to be a bit of an Achilles heel. Yeah, I mean, I think we were a little bit unfortunate with the Everton one because it is just um, pure sort of chaos where they've they've somehow managed to keep the ball in play. It looked looked for all money that it was just going to drift out of play for a um, for another corner, um, but they've somehow managed to keep it alive. And hmm. and Decore, credit to him, has managed to score a goal without punching it in for once. Yeah, well um, done, mate. But yeah. It was, I mean, when when the ball's kind of pinging around in your penalty area, in in that sort of scenario, it's it's a little bit you're kind of in the in the lap of the gods, aren't you? And it's yeah, it's just not falling our way this time. But I don't, I don't I don't really know what else we can do in in that specific incident. I think it's just just happening to be in the right place because I think when McCarthy comes for the cross and gets a bit on it, but probably not quite enough. Um, all of a sudden, the second phase when the ball's bouncing around like that, um, there's kind of you can't really train for that. I don't think it's just a case of instinct takes over, and are you do you just happen to be in the right place when the ball falls for you? Um, and unfortunately, we weren't. Um, but at least we weren't we weren't behind for very long because um, that's obviously something that had, that had kind of come up in previous games at Brentford and against Man United, where kind of that sort of bad reaction to adversity type thing where as soon as we go behind we kind of lose our heads for a while and fortune and fair play that that didn't happen um on tuesday we were straight back on it and um yeah i mean what was it about 10 minutes that we within yeah. 10 minutes that we'd equalized yeah mm. um i mean absolutely ridiculous challenge from their fullback but it's it's one of those ones that quite often goes unpunished doesn't it when um either a Either a um, winger's got a cross in or a striker's got a shot away. Um, and it feels seems like defenders feel like they've got carte blanche just to wipe the guy out. Um, so, yeah, credit to the ref for for blowing up and, and booking him for it. Um, and, yeah, I mean, Ever- Everton's um, set-piece defending is 
somehow worse than ours um, <laughs> statistically. So, yeah, I, I guess it was probably no huge surprise to to the um, analysis uh, analysts. Sorry, where did that come from? Uh, analysts um, that um, that that both the goals came from set pieces. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, the problem was I think um, Russell Martin said in his post-match interview didn't he that he um he thought we didn't didn't really progress forwards enough um especially second half we had we had a lot of the ball but didn't really do a huge amount with it um which was kind of fine because it got Everton's fans frustrated um I mean their their reaction to that substitution was both oh, hilarious it's... and hilarious and entirely justified um <laughs> taking off their only centre yeah. forward to bring a left wing back on um, who then subsequently is the only player to miss in the shootout. Um, <laughs> but did, just, yeah, just did, one, one thing, was the only one thing there, oh, sorry, yeah, one thing there, Steve. You talk about the, the go forward thing. If you look at our goal, I know it's a free kick in the end, but it was the only time that Howell Bellis had the ball, passed it forward 35, 40 yards to mm -hmm. Big Les. Big Les turned, played the ball through to Fraser. We're on the edge of their box, gets wiped out, gets the free kick mm -hmm. just from playing two forward passes with intent and you know we score from it and uh yeah there's a there's a lesson to be learned there i feel but, uh, good yeah. delivery as well <laughs> um, it's, it's not often glenn that we say that everton were the better team but uh i you know i thought they, they kind of were on the night but penalties it was nah, they, were sh they were shit yeah, they, yeah. they were they, they, had, they, had shit. The better, they had the better chances but i thought yeah. they were pretty rubbish Oh, yeah, the their goalkeeper launching the ball 80 yards up the pitch, you know, just such a throwback. I mean, I know it's Sean Dyche, and he's probably told him that, but my word, it's just so funny. I mean, I've, you know, just where we are with modern football and goalkeepers rolling the ball out and, you know, trying to play football and all that stuff. And yeah, good old Sean Dyche with his chips and his gravy, just like smash the ball out the park. It was just, it was just funny. But when, you know, um, Nathan Wood didn't have the best of games under the high ball, so you can see why they did it. Um, but I think they would have probably done it anyway, regardless of who was playing. But uh, no, I do. I didn't think Everton were particularly good. But uh, did anyone did think we should have had a penalty in the last minute? I saw you like, write about this, we... and it just kind of like yeah. passed me by, really, because I think we just knew the whistle was going to go and it was going to be a penalty. I thought, got toe, think... I thought I thought defender got a toe end on it. Did you? Because they, they gave a the corner, corner, didn't they? You gave a corner, didn't you? Yeah, he gave a corner. It's almost like I'm, I'm bottling this. You know, it's either a goal didn't, kick or didn't a penalty. Seem to be, but... Didn't seem to be many appeals from our from our players. No, I didn't think. No, I, 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 as the penalty, the actual penalty started. I, can't, I was thinking, did I imagine that or what? Because it looked like a carbon copy of the Manchester United incident, where you know Young went in to clear the mm. ball and Dibley took the extra touch and then went over. But um, it doesn't seem to be on any of the highlights pack is to um you know all the you know the condensed three minutes of highlights or whatever which is all they could get out of that game to be fair um <laughs> you know just i so i haven't i haven't seen it back but yeah that was that was a that was a weird one but the penalties were good that followed very mm. much so yeah. very much so yep. yeah it was it was a bit like that england shootout in the world cup where all our players looked supremely confident mm. and uh it's ironic considering Bollocks, yeah. we made of the penalty we had against Manchester United, and then suddenly we've got five players who all look supremely confident. And six. their goalkeeper went, yeah, six, and their goalkeeper went the wrong way on every single one, uh, apart from one. He got a fingertip to Ross Stewart's one, but other than that, it was, um, you know, all those penalties were, were very, very uh, comprehensive. And uh, yeah, it was, um, and I knew Ashley Young would miss. I, I, I'm sure he's done it before in a big game. He, he, I think he missed in the. Did he miss in the Euros in, um, in Ukraine when we lost to Italy? I think it was him and him yeah, and he um, might have done. Ashley Cole might have missed in that shootout. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. When yeah, when Joe Hart got made to look a mug by Pirlo when he got penenkered. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was nice for um, nice for McCarthy, McCarthy to go the right way for a change because he. Not only was he going the wrong way, he was doing it really, really comprehensively as well. You know, <laughs> he was diving right really over. early, which made it, which made it, just, which just just made it so easy for the takers. Yeah, yeah, but uh, but you know, I mean, he was he wasn't brilliant on Everton's goal, and he went the wrong way five times, but he comes out the hero and he made it made a couple of other good saves. Yeah, he so made a couple of good uh, saves. Yeah, overall, you know, that's what people are going to remember.
I guess the other thing, Alfie, is some of the the players which were perhaps noticeable by their absence, like Sam mm. Amo Amio, and uh, we thought Bella Kotchap might come in, but that that proved to be uh, not the case. Yeah, I do you know. I've not just seen the team sheet in this though. Was Sam Amo named on the bench? Yeah, he was. Oh, okay. for yesterday. Yeah, for yesterday. Yeah. For yesterday, oh, I don't know. He's obviously played for them twenty ones on Friday evening, and uh, obviously, like the point is that he didn't come off the pitch um, on Tuesday, which I thought was a massive shame because I was started him. But I do get the logic, and I think we even discussed it on the pod last week that ultimately he's going to want Ryan Fraser and Maxwell Cornet to play some minutes. And Maxwell Cornet, you know, neither of them set the world alight, but Maxwell looked like he offered a bit. He looks like he's got something a little bit different, and he, he could well yeah, be a useful thought, player. Thought. Yeah, he could be a useful player this season. So I do understand the idea of just make sure those guys get the minutes and. Sam Amo is still 18. His development is going to continue and continue. But it was a bit of a shame for me um, just because he'd done so well at Cardiff and I think he deserves the chance. I don't necessarily think that he's any worse than um, any of the, the guys who who, you know, who are playing, apart from obviously Tyler Dibbling, um, who's having an unbelievable form. And Amo Belakotchap is, yeah, I mean, the answer that Russell Martin gave on him was straight to the point. It was almost like, a, can you please stop asking me? This is what's going on. And he just said quite simply, I'm paid to pick the team. If it goes wrong, I get sacked and I haven't picked him. You know, he's he's training well, he's, he's he's an option, but I picked the team that I think is the best to perform and I didn't pick Arma Belakoc at this time. So clearly there's a, you know, he, he doesn't see him as an option right now. He's clearly not involved in, he didn't even play for the under-21s on Friday, um, whether that was Armel's choice or Russell's choice, you know, when four players played for the 21s, like Ryan Manning, Juan Larios, um, Sam Amo, and one more player, defensive player, played. Uh, Ronnie mm. Edwards and Armo didn't, so clearly he's not in the reckoning at the moment. So yeah, you could say that that, that tells a lot. And same for Corner actually. When is the draw? By the way, do we know? Wednesday evening after uh, Liverpool West Ham day. Oh, we've got we've got to wait that long. Mm. <laughs> so we'll be I mean, hoping yeah. somewhere a bit closer to home, right? Mm. <laughs> Everton on a Tuesday night is an absolute nightmare draw. So it's it's a it's a good place to go and watch football. And as it's the last season, it adds a little bit more to it. Um, but. I do not want to do that again. Let's go somewhere. Well, you know we're getting Liverpool away next round, aren't we? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anything else say, the, uh, Well, what we we'll say is going through the cup, I think, is a positive. I know that last yeah. time Saints got relegated, yeah. we obviously got to the semi-final and the semi-final was, was ballsed up, unfortunately, if we're being totally honest. I mean, they probably wouldn't have had a chance against Newcastle anyway, but, you know, it wasn't managed correctly. Um, and there is obviously the risk of, oh, you, you know, you could lose players in these games, but with the size of the squads uh, Saints have, I think they can continue to name rotated sides with with big players in. And uh, it's just a well-needed motivation boost. I think after the game, Russell Martin described the performance as brilliant. And he described it as brilliant again on Friday before the match against Ipswich. And now I don't I don't necessarily think it was brilliant, but it's just little bits of evidence that he can show the players and be like, look, you might have lost all the games this season, but you're doing this right, you did this right, you've got through in the cup here. So I think it's I think any win at this point, Southampton can get is a real positive. So hopefully they can get a winnable tie on Wednesday and uh, keep it going. Let's yeah, just useful do... players like yeah. useful players like you know, like the next round, for example, mm. you would maybe say, Let's get 90 minutes out of Ross Stewart. Yeah. You know, let's let's see if he can do it. So it's a it's a game where you can do that without the massive repercussions that you know mm. would follow in a in a Premier League game. So and, and you know, maybe in the next round you can give Sam Ammo a game and or it can be another game for Maxwell Corner Corner yeah. to get closer to um to full fitness. And I mean, it's interesting with the wingers because obviously this, no one's really put their hand up to say, I'm the regular left sided mm. attacking player for this season. Yeah. So there, there is definitely an opening there for, um, you know, for, for the wingers who are not currently in the squad. And a goal scorer. Uh, let's do player of the week. Um, this is the bit where um, the, the Tyler Dibbling bit. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think we're, we're, that's a given. We'll put him on the list uh, when we do the poll. Uh, Steve, any others uh, as well as uh, Dibbling? Uh, yeah, Lalana. I'm, and I imagine all three of all three of that starting midfield are going to um, going to be uh, uh, options there as well. Um, but yeah, Lalana, I thought was was superb for the what was it 58 minutes? I think he played. Mm. Uh, Glenn. Uh, Matt Fernandez, yeah. Matt Fernandez. Thought he played well when he came on against Everton. Obviously scored the first penalty. Um, I don't know who was down to take the penalty yesterday. If we got one, um, I, I, it wouldn't have surprised me if, if Fernandez has been made the new penalty taker um, as he stepped up first against Everton. But uh, mm. but no, I thought he had a really good game yesterday. And uh, and um, yeah, and in addition to uh, a decent half against Everton. Any other names for the list, Alfie? 
Oh yeah, I think the top three have been named, and you could say Flynn Downs, but I would probably say Aaron Ramsdale again, just because of the number of saves, and also the one that should have really been a match-winning save with the second to last kick of the game. So, yeah, bad dudes.